Welcome to TFT Central. Today I'm going to show you how to calibrate the best settings for the LG C2 OLED display. We're going to set it up for PC use in both SDR and HDR modes, including for gaming. You can find all the useful links, including our review of the screen in the description below. Please remember to give us a like if you enjoyed this guide as well, and subscribe for future videos. So at the moment I've got the PC connected over HDMI 2. The screen's at factory default settings, uh, so you can do the same, but don't worry if you don't, you can just follow the settings as we go through them in this guide. So the first thing we're going to want to do is set the input to operate in PC mode. So you're going to press the home icon on the remote, scroll down to home dashboard, let that load up. And in the top right hand corner, you're going to need to click on the three little dots to bring up the input mode. So go to edit inputs. And for your PC connection, whichever one it's connected to, press the little icon next to the label. And we're going to set that to PC input. And what that'll do is make sure that the screen operates at its full RGB chroma, 444 chroma, and that'll ensure you get the best picture quality for PC use. So we're going to save that. Settings have been saved. And then we're going to go and select our HDMI input. So over here, it's PC is now on HDMI 2. So I'm going to select that. So hold the little gear icon on the remote control to load this up. And you're going to go into the general menu, devices, HDMI settings, and we're going to operate the HDMI deep color mode. So at the moment, by default, it will be set to off. And what that will mean is that in your PC graphics card control panel, the maximum you'll be able to select is 4K at 30 or maybe 60 hertz. It, it will default to 30. You can actually see what mode is operating on the screen if you rapidly press the little green icon on the remote, which I will do now. So by default, you can see that it loads up and confirms that I'm operating at the moment, the default 3840 by 2160 at 30 hertz and at 8 bit. So to get around that, we're going to have to go back into the device menu, activate the 4K mode. Activate that, it gives you a little warning, press OK. You may have to change that in your graphics card, but if I load up the little information window, it's in the bottom left this time, you can see I'm now running at 3840 by 2160 at 120 hertz and at 10 bit color depth. So now that we've done that, we're going to do a couple of other main settings that will apply across all the inputs and all the modes to get the screen ready. So we're going to go back into the main menu again and go in the general menu, AI service. And for the for PC inputs, you're going to want to turn all of these off. The only one that is probably enabled by default is AI brightness. That will automatically control the brightness in darker content, depending on your ambient light conditions. Now we don't really want that necessarily in operation for PC use. So we'll disable that here. You can re-enable it for some of the other modes that we'll look at later, like for gaming, for consoles, for streaming apps or whatever. So for now, we're going to turn that off. And then we're going to go back a menu and go into the OLED care menu. So in OLED care, there's two really important things uh, that you're going to want to have a look at. So the first one is in device self-care. You're going to go into energy saving. And by default, LG have energy saving set to auto, as you can see here. What we're going to want to do is turn that off. It warns you that it's going to increase your energy consumption. We know that, that's fine. By turning that off, you'll be able to then get the optimum peak brightness from the screen, particularly important for HDR use. So if you have that enabled, you're going to severely restrict your peak brightness capability. The other thing you might want to look at, less important and an optional extra really, is you go back to the OLED panel care. One of the image retention options is this screen move feature, which basically just shifts the whole image a couple of pixels every now and again. Personally, I find this really annoying for PC use on the desktop. You can often see it happening. It's really not a problem for gaming or multimedia or movies or anything. Uh, so you may or may not want to turn this off. If you find it annoying, turn it off. I like to do so. If you don't find it annoying, no harm leaving that on, that's fine. So we've done the, the main settings. We're going to go back now to the picture menu, 
you'll see that in our case, the screen is actually defaulted to the game optimizer mode. Normally out of the box, it actually comes in the eco mode, which is far too cool. Game optimizer is probably recommended for PC use. It depends whether you want to have the same brightness level for gaming as you do for general desktop use. Um, you can decide on that. For now, we're just gonna set this up in game optimizer mode and have the same brightness level for both normal desktop applications and for gaming. So we'll choose game optimizer. And then we're gonna go into the advanced settings to make some adjustments to the brightness, the color and the clarity sections. So we'll start with brightness. The OLED pixel brightness basically dictates how bright the screen is. This is the same kind of thing as you'd see from a traditional brightness level adjustment on a desktop monitor. 90 is probably far too high. We've tested a range of different brightness levels and we like to set this all the way down to a level of 38 for desktop use, which would return you a luminance of around 120 nits. We've included a couple of other example um, brightness levels that you might want to consider. If you wanted a brighter image at 150 nits or 200 nits, you can set the OLED brightness level to the corresponding level as we've shown there. So for now, we're going to set that at 38. We're going to return to the other screen. You can leave contrast, black level as they are, gamma as they are, motion eye care. That, th those are all fine, really. All those settings in the rest of that menu are OK. We're going to go back a stage and go into color now. So this is where we're going to make um, a couple of changes for desktop PCs. So the default mode actually for color depth should be 50. In Game Optimizer, it's pushed up to 55 to give you a slightly more vivid image. For PC desktop use, we like to set that back down to 50. This is maybe another reason why you might want to have one mode set up for desktop and one made mode set up for games. I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute, but return that to 50 for PC use. Color gamut. So you probably want to have this set on auto detect and that will automatically detect the type of content you're viewing. And importantly, it will trigger the sRGB emulation mode for desktop applications. So if you, unless you specifically want to work with wider color gamut content, or have the more vivid and saturated appearance, then we'd recommend leaving that on auto detect um, for sRGB emulation. And then finally, one of the most significant changes we're gonna make is to the white balance control. So come in here and choose the color temperature option. Now the default zero setting is actually far too cool. It looks quite blue, white images look particularly blue. We're gonna adjust that all the way down to a setting of warm 48. Now in our testing and on our sample unit, Warm48 returns you a white point of approximately 6,500K. So that's the recommended uh, white point for a desktop monitor in this situation. So you're gonna to wanna to make that much warmer. If you want it even warmer still, you could go as far as 50. If you want it slightly cooler, play around with it. But a setting of Warm48 should bring you much closer to 6,500K. So we're gonna go back out of the color menu now. We've finished that section. Last up is the clarity section. So for PC use, you're going to want to turn adjust sharpness all the way down to zero. You don't need the screen artificially sharpening the image at all for PC use. You may want to turn that back on for your streaming apps or your TV or, or whatever, maybe even for your gaming, but certainly for desktop PC use, turn that down to zero. If we come out of that menu and we press the gear icon once on the left hand side, you can go to the game optimizer shortcut. And for gaming, there's a few things we're gonna to want to do. So we're gonna to wanna to enable this menu, first of all, at the top. It will go a nice shade of purple. You can play around with the game genre if you want for different settings, uh, different gaming scenarios. That's down to user taste. The one thing we would recommend you turn on and enable if you've not done so already would be VRR and G-Sync if you're an NVIDIA graphics card user or AMD FreeSync Premium if you're using an AMD card. So that will enable VRR and you'll see at the top here, it will say on and it will confirm that you're operating that. You can also check that the low latency mode is enabled uh, here, prevent input delay slash input lag. You can try the boost setting in our testing. It didn't really make much of a difference, but certainly no harm in trying. You shouldn't need to change much else in the picture menu. You can play around with the 
black stabilizer and the white stabilizer settings if you want to tweak the gamma in the black content, the darker content of the games, that's quite useful. Most of the other settings here should just correspond to what we've just changed in the main picture menu, so no need to adjust that. The main things would be make sure VRR is turned on and maybe play around with game genre and things like black stabilizer. So that is the screen set up for PC use for both desktop applications and for gaming. Obviously a final check you want to do at a graphics card level is make sure you're set at 120 hertz, make sure you've enabled G-Sync or FreeSync from your graphics card and you should be good to go. Now we're going to set up the screen in HDR mode from a PC for both videos and games, anything that will support HDR. First thing we've done is in Windows we've enabled HDR in the normal way and you should see the screen present a little HDR icon in the top right. And once you enter the main menu, again we're at default settings because we've just factory reset the screen, you should see the picture mode listed as HDR. Now in our case it's defaulted to Game Optimizer. You may find that it defaults to standard. For PC gaming and probably for PC multimedia, we're going to want to use Game Optimizer. That will help minimise the input lag overall, certainly beneficial for gaming. And because we've operated in the PC input mode, we've labelled HDMI input 2 as PC in our case, then most of the image processing stuff that would otherwise be available is not available. So we might as well use Game Optimizer to maximise performance. So we're going to come back out of that and there's going to be a few things you'll want to change or check here. So we're going to go into advanced settings. First of all, we're going to go in the brightness menu. Again, we'll do these in order. So in brightness menu, for HDR, you will want to leave OLED pixel brightness at 100. So that will help ensure that for HDR content, you get the maximum peak brightness. You don't want to change that. You don't want to change contrast, leave that at 100, leave black to 50. Dynamic tone mapping is a feature that will tone map your HDR content. Now, so some people might want to turn that off. Um, so if you were particularly bothered about artistic intent, uh, you'll probably want to turn HDR dynamic tone mapping off. HDR gaming interest group, that is for console gaming. Whether you have it on or off really depends on your taste. The on mode will help improve the brightness, particularly in dark content. Personally, I like to leave this turned on because I prefer a brighter HDR image, particularly in the dark shades and the dark content. Unless you're watching HDR in a very dark room or playing HDR games in a very dark room, I think you'll probably find that the dynamic tone mapping set to on will give you a preferable picture and a preferable experience. So that's down to user taste. Uh, peak brightness should be locked to high. If it's not, make sure it's set as high. The rest of the settings you do not need to change. We're going to come back out and we're going to go into the color menu. So again, like in the SDR PC input, color depth should default to 50 for PC input. It goes up to 55 in the game optimizer mode. If you want your HDR content and your games to look a little bit more vivid, a little bit more saturated in their colors, you can set that up to 55. No real harm. Just try the, the two different settings and see what you like. Color gamut, again, leave on auto detect. That will ensure that any wide gamut HDR content is mapped to the appropriate color space. Um, and then we're going to want to go into the white balance menu, just like we did in SDR for PC use. The HDR mode is again far too cool out of the box. You're going to want to go in here, change the color temperature all the way down to something around warm 48. That should return you a white point of 6500K, which is our target for HDR content as well. Again, that will just correct the overly cool default setup. We'll set that. We're going to come back a screen and again in the clarity section. Now for desktop PC use, we turn the adjust sharpness setting down from 10, which is the default, back down to zero because we don't want that artificially sharpening the image for your PC input. Whether or not you want to have it on for HDR games and HDR movies and the like is again down to user taste. I think if you're going to be sat close to the screen for PC gaming, you're probably better off turning that back down to zero. If you're going to be a bit further away or you like that extra sharpness boost that it might give you, you can by all means leave it at 10 or even increase it a bit further. 
we tend to find that if we're sat further away from the screen for movies or games, including PC gaming, you know, maybe from a, a joypad or something, then increasing the sharpness can enhance the image a little bit. Um, just be wary that it is artificially enhancing it, but the screen does a pretty good job of that anyway. So, and then we're gonna come back, we're gonna exit the main menu. That's all the main settings in there. Remember that earlier for the SDR section, I'll go back in to show you in case you've skipped straight to the HDR section. Important things you're gonna to want to do is in general menu, AI service, you probably wanna turn all of those settings off. OLED care menu, you're gonna to wanna to come in here, go in device self-care, really important step, turn energy saving to off. It's set as auto by default, make sure you turn that off, otherwise you're going to severely impact your peak brightness, which is of course not what you wanna do for any kind of HDR content. So we've done those, we're gonna exit that menu and then we're gonna press the gear icon just once on the joypad. It quick loads the uh, game optimizer menu because actually we'd already turned that on. Make sure that your frame rate and everything looks as it should. Make sure you've set your frame rate in Windows to 120 Hertz if you're gaming. Um, you can change the input lag between standard and boost if you want. It doesn't make a major difference, but feel free to experiment for your gaming. Importantly, make sure that, uh, assuming you want to use them, VRR and G-Sync is turned on if you're an NVIDIA user, or AMD FreeSync Premium is turned on if you're an AMD user. That will activate the adaptive sync for VRR, and that will definitely help for your gaming. So there's a few other settings you can change uh, and play around with in here, like the game genre. Um, Maybe if you go in the picture menu, you can change things like black stabilizer, which will enhance your uh, gamma in black details. So a couple of other things you might wanna change for gaming, generally for HDR movies and things, you don't need to do anything in that menu. We've done the main stuff in the main menu.